Pitch Deck. Prepared for and presented at the 2017 Square One Entrepreneurship Training Program. Square One is a program of the Center for Emerging Technologies. CET is an affiliate of the Cortex Innovation Community. Square One is funded in part by the Missouri Technology Corporation. Nobody cares about you. Your target is busy. Their lives are crazy. Spouses, bosses, kids, friends, money, all kinds of things make rake their minds for their time. These are the things they care deeply about. So how do you get them to care about you? Raise your hand if there is anything in your life more important to you than me. Everybody raise your hand, because you have a million things that are more important to you than me. That is the same thing you will encounter when you sit down in front of whoever you are selling on what it is that you do. They will be dealing with the fight they had with their spouse, the report that's due in two hours, that they have to sit through your silly pitch for half an hour and they can't get to it. And meanwhile, that's what they're working on on their computer while you're doing your pitch. So how do you get them to care about you? Sales science tells us that you have seven to 10 seconds, which is what I just did, to get people to stop thinking about what it is going on in their mind and get them to begin to think about you. You have to shock them out of their life. Once you accomplish that, you have, ten, you have two minutes, no more, to get them to focus out of their life until they are thinking only about you and your business. You have to get them to start asking questions. If you get to the end of the first two to three minutes of your presentation and they aren't asking you questions, if you are able to just go through slide three and four and five and six and seven, you may as well leave because you have lost them at three, all right? So that is what we, that's the part of the presentation of a pitch deck that we teach. Your pitch deck is what Luis just taught you about. But what that is, is your pitch deck is going to be about all the things in your business plan. Your business plan is an internal document. It is the document that advises you first on how you're going to run your business. Your pitch deck is how you turn that outside and present it to your world. We are not going to go into the 20 something pages of your pitch deck because those are all the stuff that you have learned throughout this class. So you're going to present that in a way that gives the audience a way to understand it. What you have to do is you have to know that deck cold so that and anticipate as many questions as your audience is going to ask as humanly possible. They're going to ask all the questions that Luis just put on the slide, right? You've got to have that slide by slide by slide. Because once you get through your first two minutes, they better be asking you, well, what's the size of your market? How did you analyze the size of your market? How did you decide what industry you're going to be in? What does your cash flow statement say? What are your pro formas? Blah, 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 blah. They're going to be going to ask you these questions. You are going to go slide three to 17 to four to 36 to 12 to two to seven, to whatever. And you've got to be able to do that. So a little bit, who am I and why do you care? So, I'm an attorney, I've been practicing law. I've been an attorney since 1988. I've advised a whole bunch of corporations and small businesses on strategy and what they do. I'm also a strategist. I taught the capstone strategy class at St. Louis University for three years, the MBA program. I also am an entrepreneur. I started my own business in 1999 with my brother. We had nothing but a cool idea. And we raised $1.25 million in debt and equity, $750,000 in equity to bring that business forward. And then 9-11 happened and that was really, really bad for us. But we struggled through and ultimately sold the business and got everybody's money back, which was good. Uh, so I also currently run the Missouri Venture Forum Fast Pitch Program. Missouri Venture Forum has been around since 1994 and most of the things that you see in the ecosystem, a lot of them were born out of the Missouri Venture Forum in the 90s when there was nothing else. So I've been involved. I did a two-minute forum presentation years ago, and I, I got my money from doing that. So I learned this process. Now I teach it. 
So you have seven to 10 seconds. What do you have to do in that seven to 10 seconds? You have to tell me the problem that you are going to solve that is going to make me say, holy, bad word, if they can solve that, I'm going to give them all my money, right? So the first thing has to be, what is that problem that will make me react from inside, that will make me say, that is the coolest, if they can solve that, I'm on board, right? So that's the first seven to 10 seconds. Your next two minutes, and we're gonna practice this in a minute, so everybody knows what their problem is that they solve, right? So you've done all this stuff. So we're gonna go around the room, we're gonna actually do a seven to, ten, seven to 10 second pitch, and then we'll do some other stuff. After you get your seven to 10 second pitch, you now have to compress that entire business plan into two minutes with the most important pieces of it addressed, and you can do it. You will get six videos of six companies that have done that for Missouri Venture Forum. You'll get to see how they did it. But what they want to know is, what is your unique solution to that crazy problem that everybody has, that everybody recognizes, that you've expressed to me? Why you? So why you has to do with who are you? Why do I care? What makes me think you're going to solve this problem when nobody else has? What is unique about your management team, your background, your drive, your board of directors, whoever it is that is your team, that is gonna make me care. I don't want all their names, I don't want all their titles, I don't want all their backgrounds, I don't want all that crap, because I only have two minutes to tell you about it. But I need to know who you are, right? Why now? So why is it important that we solve this problem right now, as opposed to 10 years from now? Why is it relevant to do right now? Why is everybody going to want you to solve this problem right now? Where are you right now? So this is traction. So traction is a really important piece of your first two minutes. Do I have a prototype? Am I just at the idea stage? Do I have uh, sales? That'd be the wonderful thing. Do you have some sales? Do customers actually like what it is that you're offering? If you have sales, that is the ultimate answer to, can this be sold, right? Because the answer is yes, are you selling it? So that's a good thing. And then what is the opportunity? What is the size of the market? So what we're looking at there is what people want, what investors want, which is a lot of who we work with, people who are looking for investment from third parties. They want to look at a home run. They're looking for home runs. They're going to invest in 10 companies. Every 10 companies, at least six are going to fail miserably and they will get no money back. Two of them, they might get their money back and break even. They might call those singles. Then you're gonna have a double or a triple and that makes, it makes them a little bit of money. And out of that, they've got one home run that makes them enough money that makes the whole 10 investments worth doing. But every investment they evaluated from the beginning as can this be a home run. So if someone's gonna invest in you, that's what he's talking about, the lazy eye guy, right? That was never gonna be a home run because I can't make enough sales or enough left lazy eyed people. Banks will be more likely to invest in the singles and the doubles, right? Because their interest is in getting their money back plus interest. And so, but that's a harder nut to crack for a startup. But SBA is a good way to go with that. Um, so, and then at the end of the day, you, at the end of your two minutes, you have to have an ask. What do I, what do I want, all right? Uh, that can be an amount of money. That can be certain resources. But at the end of the day, why are you talking to me? I want a sale. I want you to loan me money. I want you to invest in me in some way. What is, what is it that you're standing here? Why are we having this conversation? <laughs> so we have to know that at the end of the day. I'm interested because you made me say, oh my gosh, I really think that's a cool idea and your unique solution solves my problem, right? So I'm good about that. So now let's start out with, what I'd like to do is you take volunteers to talk about what is your problem and then I want everybody else to be the judge. Did they knock your socks off and make you say, oh my gosh, I would put my money in that deal if they can solve that problem? Now this is not, what does your company do? This is not, our company does blah, blah, blah. No, it is, what is the problem? So one of our guys, Viasera, did a presentation. Their opening line was, 
uh, antibiotics, I mean, uh, 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 gosh, what are they called? Microbes or whatever, MRSA in their case, is becoming antibiotic resistant and, and millions of people die. So that had nothing to do with them, but you obviously know this is a problem that you can get to that because it was very powerful and it said what they were doing. Then they talk about how do they solve that keep people from dying. So we're trying to create a problem and then identifying a problem is gonna make you stop and listen. So who wants to try and do their, express their problem in a way that knocks mine and everybody else in the room's socks off? There's a bunch of investors in here, my investment. <laughs> Anybody? I'm going to pick on somebody. Yeah. Um, Stand up, please. <laughs> Nobody can hear you if you see. Hi, everyone. Christian. No, no, no. So when you, lead, when you begin your pitch, you lead with what you're doing. After they're interested, you can tell them who you are. Right? Go. If I offered you a vaccine that covered against 10 different types of bacteria, or one that protected against 13 different types of bacteria, which would you choose? We all know it's obvious. But could anyone guess the difference in sales? What if I told you it was billions of dollars every year? So what did everybody think? Are you guys into this deal? I'm into it. When he goes okay. public. Say what? <laughs> so, so my first question is, um, I guess I was going, as we were going through this, you said, was the difference between 10 and 13? So that didn't seem like a big deal to me, but I guess it, it, your second line was designed to make it seem like a big deal to me? Yeah, I was tempted to. Yeah, okay. Well, that's where I kind of struggled with your deal. So um, what is it at the end of the day that you're, what is the problem you're actually solving? Because what you really told me was, in other words, are a bunch of people, a bunch of people dying because they don't have this vaccine or What's actually happening because we- sell it that way. There are people dying from it, but we're going more on the, there's multiple types of this vaccine and the more coverage they provide, they generally sell significantly larger. So, so your, your basically idea is that it, because the, because just because we go from 10 to 13, we can make billions more in the market than, than we could at 10. And it's, it's actually, that, that's not you my vaccine. That's actually, two vaccines on the market already, and the difference is billions of dollars. So the one that protects against 10 has a certain number of sales, and the one that protects against 13 has billions more annually in revenue. Oh, that's interesting. OK. All right, well, so that was his pitch. Now, that will obviously be a pitch to people who are actually looking at that, but it's going to understand what you're talking about, right? Um, and that's fine, because every yeah, audience is different. The, one point five million people die each year. One million of those are children under the age of five. Okay. That's a good way to start. You know, so it's why do they die? Because of lack of adequate yeah, vaccine. Yeah, there's a preventable disease. And and it's because they didn't get a vaccine and da da da. Correct. So let me so let me ask. Okay, so I don't want to get into the woods into the weeds <laughs> on your deal, but what you want to do is get. I don't think there was this visceral reaction out here to the so many numbers. So the more you can give somebody, in my opinion. Now, when you're standing in front of tr truly guys who have read your business plan 32 times, which nobody ever does, by the way, <laughs> uh, but you know, you submitted it. When you go, in my experience, when you go, when you get to all the way to the point where you're pitching a VC, which is years from now for you guys, you'll have five people in front of you. One of them will be your sponsor. They'll have brought you to their partners. That's the only person who read your business plan. Everybody else got it. And they skimmed the parts they care about. But they really haven't read it because why? They have 400,000 other business plans to look at. They may have all read it, that'd be wonderful, but they just sort of skimmed over it. So you're, this is your opportunity to really knock them off the socks. Your sponsor's on your team, the other four people aren't. Most of the time you're gonna be doing a pitch to someone who has no idea what it is you're doing and you're pitching them for some completely different reason, like you want them to back you, you know, just as a, as a, as a supporter or whatever. All right, let's try a different one. How about you, you got something? Um, Stand up. Please buy cameras only work when they're on. So what is it? So please body cameras only work when they're on. So what what is the solution just so I understand this? So cities and towns can't afford to keep them on all the time. That's a crippling expense. Uh-huh. So my technology enables them to be on at critical moments. 
Okay, so why is it important that they're on? Because that's the real problem you solve. It captures meaningful content and reduces the cost of storage. Okay, that's really boring. <laughs> At the end of the day, what's the why do you want them on all the time? Not why do they why do you save costs for them being on the time, right? Why does why does the world want body cameras on all the time? Yeah. Right? Sure. Why is it? To capture the important moments. There's two sides to every story and those videos offer clarity. Okay, so leading off with we don't have massive disruption. There, every year there are massive you know, protests around the uncertainties between an interaction between the police and the public that often result in violence. Cameras, on body cameras, would solve this problem if only they were on all the time. Now does that seem like, here's the problem, now you say, how can I keep them, here's the problem, here's the solution over here. But what I, when you say, you know, there's massive protests, everybody sees that, that makes sense to people, did that, which seemed more powerful to you, the way I said it or the way she said it? Just, just me? Good, good answer, because I'm the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also bigger than all you, most of you guys. Um, so that, so that, do you understand, do you guys kind of understand the difference when you're, you're solving a business problem in your business plan, but when you lead off and you're trying to make somebody pay attention to you and awake up from the rest of their life, and you're talking, this is not how you lead your business plan. This is not the opening of your business plan generally, because it isn't really, this is how you begin a pitch. This pitch might last a couple seconds, on an elevator, for example, this might last a bunch of time, but you've got to get somebody out of their life. Yes? Is it fair to say that you, your, your example gave the pain of what was going on, why we need it. So, so pain is what you're looking for, or the pleasure or whatever. Right. So, so we ask for a visceral reaction. That's a big word that I usually don't use in the opening part, but I want you to have a visceral reaction. I want you to look at that and say, you are so right. We have to solve that problem. Right? We see protests in our, in, our, in our city. We know that if we'd only had a video of what happened, maybe we wouldn't have the protest because everybody would see. Instead, we have his word against his word or whoever's involved, right? So I, I care what you, I love, that's a cool technology. I like that. Who else wants to take a shot at it? Well, that's cool. I like that. Did you guys like that? Yeah. Yeah, because I, I mean, here you are. That's a real problem that a whole bunch of us have faced. Where the cookies? Now, how do you solve that? What's your unique proposition? I've got an insulated kitchen towel that will that, that can handle the heat even when wet. Oh, cool. All right, good. So that's what we're looking for. I like I like that. It's it doesn't have to be you know saving the world from protests. It can be <laughs> instead of being saving somebody from burning their hands in the kitchen. That's a good solve, right? <laughs> So that's a good problem that people are going to relate to, and lots and lots and lots of people have this problem. Um, who else wants to try? Go ahead. Our digital footprints are multi-platforms wide and now 10 years old. We are not a retweet, Facebook post, Instagram, and Snap. Final thought speaks to great capacity. Okay, so, so start at the beginning again. Give me the, what's the big problem people face? Our digital footprints are multi-platform wide. Okay, so let me, let me start with, this is another important piece. Um, you, you need to start, you need to speak in a sixth grade level. That's really weird, but your brain is divided into parts. And you actually have languages in different parts of your brain. So you have your everyday speak that you, that you speak. That's what you have to speak in. Over in the different part of your brain, you have your written language language. That is broader and allows for longer sentences and bigger words and things. What happens when you started your sentence, I, begin, I stopped at like the third word in, our digital footprint, right? Well, what happened was you said five more words before my brain reached over into my writing side, yanked it over into my brain side. It didn't take that long, but I missed five or six of your words, right? Sure. So try and... Try and, this is just general knowledge, right? This is the way your brain actually works, right? You have a set, you literally talk, speak every day. It's why you say wanna gonna, whatever he <laughs> said, right? You have a daily speech pattern that you use. Now you, what's the reality is, you have, you have like three of them. 
You have one for your neighborhood, you have one for your office, and you have one for your family, your mom, or whatever, right? So you have the folks that you just talked with who are your buddies, and then you have a completely different conversation with your grandma, which is a completely different conversation than you have at the office with your engineering friends, right? You're talking some jibber jabber nobody understands. And, you know, whatever your office speak is. And then you have your written language, which is different still. So the more you can, so if you're speaking to techies for whom that language is the language they're living in, that's perfectly fine. If you're speaking to investors who live in a money world, then they might get lost partway into that. This is just part of this, and your whole presentation should sort of be gauged to who, are I, who am I presenting to. So speaking is a little different than writing. That's an important piece of pitch decking or presenting. So, so. you could say everything you ever email or tweet is going to survive you and that should scare you. Yeah, that's a great idea. You know, are people, you could even take an example out of real life where somebody's, where somebody's social footprint five, six, ten years ago just burnt them to a crisp somewhere. You know, those kind of things are... Uh, but I would think create even more footprint, so I don't know it. Okay, well, I'm just saying... Going anti that. Yeah, yeah. But what, but what Harry's talking about is, very, is very you know... Very precise, yeah. yeah, so you get an idea of what you're saying, and it's easier for guys with gray hair like me to get. Right, because I'm thinking in a different, and quite honestly, most of the people who are gonna sit in the room thinking about investing you are men and women with gray hair because they're the people who have money still in life, right? To a great. It could be. Okay. So, so one of the important things is this, the way you leave this, with this is when you walk into a CEO's office to sell them your suite of services, they are, they're doing this, right? And you're trying to get them to talk. If you don't lead with something that's going to get them to put this down and stop typing, you don't get them. And I've done that a whole bunch of times. You've got to walk in and solve a problem right now. And you better get them to put their phone down, right? And this is true, whether you, it doesn't matter who you're talking to. I mean, like I said, everybody's life has life. So let's... Who else would like to take a shot at this? Go ahead. As a parent, how many of you want your kids' activity schedules in the palm of your hand without uh, entering into Google Calendar? So, say for when you first were looking down, I, I just missed it. And that's, okay, sorry. So take a shot at me. Uh -huh. As a parent, how many of you want your kids' activity schedules in the palm of your hand without you entering it into a Google Calendar? Oh, that's a good idea. How do you feel about that? Was that, was that, so sometimes questions, are a good way to start because they beg the question, they beg the answer, right? That's okay, sometimes you can do that. Um, let me think about, did, did, so answer from the audience, did that make you want to hear more about her deal? Yes. Everybody? Did it jump, did it get you out of your world? And Because you're sitting in here trying to think about your way to say your, your seven to 10 seconds, right? Yes. Did it make you stop thinking about your seven to 10 seconds and think about her thing? So we need to know yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Okay, so there's some no's. How could she have done it a little bit? Maybe there's a way to get it more powerful. Anybody have any suggestions on how she might get that more powerful? Go I would ahead. say, don't you hate being late to whatever? Because like being late is something for me that like I such anxiety about being late. <laughs> right. So I mean, I guess it's going to depend on who your people are, you know? Because it's like because I'm already thinking that's too complicated. You know, but like, don't you hate being late? Oh my God, I hate being late. Help me not be late. You know. So yeah. Just... So, so at the end of the day, what you're, what you really want to do is get you sort of are bordering on your solution, and what we need to get to is the problem that is going to is is being late or forgetting your kid. I, I even forgetting your yeah, <laughs> right. Picking up somebody else's kid. I even think you're. You know what? Straight up. We can all relate to the times when the, the doors close behind whatever basketball bags. We stand out there, it's four degrees and it's raining, and you're like, oh my God, and where's my mom? And she's late, right? Yeah. So those, sometimes something like that that makes people react, right? It makes me think, cause, or makes me laugh. Any kind of reaction you can get, you want a reaction from people. So, Think about that in terms of, sometimes we get really boring 
And honestly, it's funny, when we, when we do this, almost everybody we start with starts with the kind of just problems that you're talking about. Because you're thinking about your business problem, which is really important. And your business plan is really going to talk about your business proposition. But when you begin to speak, you have to get people to care about what, what you're saying. So now, you have, how much time do I have? I have a little time. All right. So now you have two minutes to get all the rest of that stuff into your pitch, which you can absolutely do, and every one of our folks ultimately does that, you will get six, we could almost, we could maybe put one up, but you'll get six, six videos of folks that went through this process whose first presentations were like five minutes long, <laughs> and we got them down. So what you want to do is talk about, and I want you actually, each of you, to sort of take a minute to do this. Write down that visible problem that you think your your business solves, right? Write that down and then and begin to try and think of it in terms of how am I going to shock my audience out of whatever they're doing, like thinking about their seven seconds pitch. So you have basically one to two sentences to get this across. So take a few seconds and kind of write that down you do, if you want to or not, it's up to you. All right, since it's only seven, 10 seconds, you should be done. <laughs> <laughs> so what we want to do now is talk about the next two minutes, because now I've really got to, I have to make you want to care about my business, right? I've got you at least look, think, understanding them. Oh my God, if he can solve that problem, I'm all in. Now you have to prove to me you can solve that problem that you can solve that problem. Not that the problem can be solved, but that you specifically can solve this problem. So the first thing you have to do, now you can actually put these in a lot of different orders, and people do. Um, what is your unique solution? What is so unique about what it is you're doing relate, relating to this problem that, that other people aren't doing? What's your value proposition? Now the reality is your business may not, your idea might be not be that much more unique than everybody else's, but you, you have an idea. That's your, this, is your, this is why you did this, right? Because the problem is why you did it. Sometimes you didn't realize that. You just thought it was a great idea, right? But now you have the problem that you've solved, and you probably, like her, reached in the oven and burnt the bejesus out of your hand because your cookies had to come out and couldn't find anything to grab them with. So you said, oh my God, I need to have this thing. So what is your unique solution? And then, why you? This is your, one of the biggest things that people, that investors invest in is the management team. You can have the greatest idea in the world, and if you are a bad, if you are not the team that I can believe in, in as far as executing on this, then I'm not gonna invest in you, because I don't believe that you can make this happen, right? So that's a really important why me is an important piece of this. Your passion is relevant, your education is relevant, your background is relevant, your why did I do this crazy thing is relevant, right? A lot of people get into business because their mother has a disease they want to solve or their somebody was shot by a policeman and nobody knows what happened. You know, something happened or somebody's a policeman and their policeman was punished for something that happened and nobody knows what's happened. Whatever, things happen to you and that's why you do what you do sometimes. So that's important, that passion is relevant. You should all have, and I presume people have talked about this, you should all have a board of something, board of advisors or a board of directors. People you know who are smart, who are willing to give you advice and support for free. So you, you should reach out, there are a lot of people who are willing to help small entrepreneurs without being paid for it. Now you can't, they're not gonna work for you 12, they're not going to work for you any hours a day. But they will let you call them with questions and they will you know, meet with you for coffee if you pay for the coffee, you know, et cetera. But I mean, a lot of them will pay for the coffee. Now, I know this firsthand because I've 
I've had, you know, people I've had, I had a board of directors, I had a group of people that were involved in my business. Once we raised money, that board of directors became the people who I was invested with. But as we were building up, the board of directors, a board of advisors, and they were people who I trusted, who trusted me and believed in me, who were willing to support me in what I was trying to do. So build that up. Reach outside of your sphere of influence, right? It shouldn't be your brother and your, it can be your brother and your mother if they're really, really great in the space, but don't be afraid to reach out to advisors you knew in school, people that are at your local community center or whatever, whoever, whatever your thing is that you're trying to create, who might know about that? Somebody at CET, somebody at T-Rex, somebody at Cortex, somebody at whatever your thing is. So build a board of advisors. So it's me and all these wonderful people, right? So you don't say my board of advisors is Joe and he's a this and Mark Joe and she's a that. You say my board of advisors is composed of uh, it, PhDs in uh, the, the biological sciences who advise me on this. Right? That's good enough because later on I got a slide that lists all those people and tells me why they're wonderful. Right? So that's okay. I don't have to, I'm, I don't have time in two minutes. But now I say you, the advisor, looks at me and says, "Man, that guy put together a strong group." We'll see how strong it is, but I'm starting to ask that question, and that's what you want. Your two minutes is designed to get them to ask questions. I want them to want to see that slot, right? So why now? So let's talk about what is in the industry now. Why does anybody care about the, you know, what it is you're building out from a digital standpoint? And why is this really critical that we do this right now as opposed to later? Um, especially with digital stuff and maybe with, you know, uh, bacterial kind of stuff, which is how far off in the future before whatever you're doing can be real. How long will it take before? A long time. Right, 10 years? Uh, yes, 10 to 15. Okay, so, so part of your why now is a little bit harder because it's not now. It's a long way from now. And the issue always becomes in biologics and stuff like that is, how many other people across the country in Stanford and you know, Harvard or whatever are doing the same thing and are gonna get there, but they're already two years in. So you need to know that, right? Is somebody else out there doing it and, and are we ahead of them? So why now? Because no one's doing it yet, right? Or whatever. So that can be harder because if I get into the pipeline that 15 years from now, I'm two years ahead of the other people who got in two years later and still had to wait 15 years. So, that's a hard one because now is not real for you. So that's important so, because there's an urgency to whatever you're pitching. If you're pitching to buy, when you're, when you, when, why do you think people run sales? Create urgency. Create urgency. Why now? Why now? Because it's 50% less than it will be in an hour or that it was yesterday, right? That's a sense of urgency. You want to create a sense of urgency that makes them believe that now is the time to get in and you're the people who are going to make it happen. So then where are you now? So now you begin, so these are all called traction. Traction is a word that you, you're, you're focusing on in your first two minutes. Traction, traction, traction is where are you? Why me? I've built a team, right? So I'm not just me. I'm not going to do this all by myself. I've got a team of people. That's traction. So, Six people believe in me, or four, or how many people are standing back here that I'll put on a slide later. Why now? That's, uh, I've looked, done the research to figure out why is now. I know all my competitors. I know what's going on in the industry, right? That gives me a, a comfortable level that, I'm, that my traction is at the right time. Where are you now? Do I have a prototype yet? Do I have any working model? Do I at least have designs on paper? Do I have an engineering team that's going to build this if I only had $20,000? Do I have, you know, if I've already built it and I started to sell, sell phase one of this, do I have 20,000 users? Do I have four users? Do I, have I sold this to anybody? These are, these are where am I now? And that's really important because nothing is more indicative, again, as I said earlier, of that you can sell this than that you have, right? Um, also, the other thing is, who's already, how much have you raised any money? So there's a couple ways to raise money. Uh, one is, most, the number one way, first thing people do is called friends and family money, right? So 
If mom has any money and isn't willing to invest in you, that's a problem. She doesn't have to invest a lot. Now, if mom doesn't have any money, mom doesn't have any money and nobody cares. But, but if, if mom's got some cash or dad's got some cash or somebody's got some cash who's, who loves you and they won't invest in you, that's a problem. For me as a person who doesn't care one rat's the duty about you um, investing in you, right? So, that, that, so getting your friends and family on board is actually kind of important to me as a later stage investor. You should, if that is not, if they, even if that is an option, you can look also at, a lot of folks will build traction with Indiegogo campaigns or Kickstarter. Are you familiar with Indiegogo and Kickstarter? These are free money deals. You set up a goal and you go online for say 30 days or 45 days. It's a pain in the butt. And it takes a plan and it takes a, understanding how to do it. But if you set a goal of 25 or 30 or 40 or 50 thousand dollars, whatever it is, you need to be comfortable before you start your campaign that you already are going to reach it. That means that when you launch your campaign, you know that X number of people are going to put in $15 and 20 bucks, blah, 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 and you're going to be at $35,000 on day three. Okay? And then I'm going to hit my 60 because I've got a bunch of other people who put in later. And then if that also gets me to the top of the Kickstarter, the Indiegogo place, and then now I, maybe I do 120, 150, and to a third party investor that says somebody thinks this is really cool. They can't actually buy your product because you haven't made it yet, but they bought the idea and they actually put money into it and they're getting nothing for that. So these are just ways to begin to, uh, to prove to the third party world that you have, that this is something people are interested in, right? So you're selling nothing to people for nothing, and yet a whole bunch of people bought it. So that's really cool. If you can do that, we're good, right? So now that's, none of those things are truly required if you have an outstanding idea and you've got some sales and some of those things, but these are just indicators of what you have. So these are part of traction. Now you can't say all that in your opening two minutes, but you can say, we did an Indiegogo campaign and we, when we, we raised $160,000 in 30 days. We are shooting for 30, right? Is that impressive? Yeah. yeah. That'd be really impressive if it was 600,000, but it's, it'd be impressive if you were shooting for 30 and you made 50, right? What's tricky is if you're shooting for 30 and made four. So, that's not as good. So that's why I say when you do an you do an Indigo or a Kickstarter campaign, work with somebody who knows what they're doing with it. And there are a lot of there are folks out there who are experts in this. And make sure that you know what you're doing. You have a website and all the stuff you're supposed to do. And there's a whole thing. There's books on it. I have one at home on how to do this. So and then finally, so um, obviously we need to know this is all part of your business plan. How big is the market? Can this be a home run? Right? Can I sell? 150 million, 300 million of these worldwide, nationally, regionally, wherever, whatever. You know, how big of a market is this really? I don't want to know, you don't have time to talk about how are you going to go to market, though that's got to be in your slides. You want to talk to them about, here's what I think the market size is. Here's what I think the real market size is. And again, it's not a random percentage. It's based on these assumptions. But you're not going to go through all that jibber jabber. You only have two minutes, right? You want them to say, how did you come up with a market size? Fancy it ass. Here's slide seven. Boom. And I have slide, slide seven. It goes through your whole analysis of how you did your market analysis down to from total market size to each of those pieces. Um, all the way down to what your target is, right? The goal of your first two minutes is to get them to ask the questions that are answered in all of your slides. Does that make sense? If you miss your seven to 10 second window, you may as well go home. Because I am no longer listening. All of you listen to Luis's presentation on business plans, right? Everything he said was really <coughs> important. How many of you listened to the whole thing? Raise your hand if you listened to every minute of every word that he said. Nobody. That's exactly what will happen in your presentation if you just go slide to slide to slide 
the slide because no one can focus for a half an hour without wandering off into the rest of their life. But if you've got them engaged in what you're doing so that they're asking you for slide number 20 and they're asking you for slide number four, then I'm not going through this presentation one at a time. When I did this, my very first presentation, I thought wandering through one by one would be good. Well, I got into this room of guys, so I luckily did my presentation and a guy decided that my idea was really, really cool. We invented a fertilizer injection system for in-ground sprinklers that allows you to take care of your yard through your in-ground sprinkler system without having to do anything, all right? So that was the solution. That wasn't the problem because I didn't know how to do this then. So we didn't have a problem, but this guy liked the solution and it was cool. And so I stood up in front and I started going through my slides, but immediately this room full of millionaires started asking me questions on all my slides. I got all flustered because I'm like, wait a minute, I didn't do three yet. <laughs> I can't go to 22 and I haven't done four. You know, so I did it. I mean, I went through, I knew my slide deck whole, but I was a little bit unprepared for the fact that that's how it goes. At least that's how it's gone for me twice. Um, the second time I did it, I was in New York the week before 9-11. We were going out for our second round of funding. Uh, we'd, we'd hit a bunch of benchmarks. We missed a bunch of benchmarks, which is going to happen. And 9-11 was not good to us afterwards, but we didn't know what was going to happen yet. And so I'm standing in front of these guys, and we did our presentation. And again, this time I was really prepared, and I nailed that. And I'll never forget, oh, six days later, when those towers came down, and I'm like, oh my God, that's, we were five blocks, six blocks, whatever. We could see the towers from the offices that I presented in. And that was really not good. So six months later, we finally connected with the folks and they said, Ned, we have no, we love your idea. It's a great idea, but we have no idea what's gonna happen. I didn't get my money. So that can happen. <laughs> But the second time I knew what I was doing when I went in. So be prepared, right? So know your slides cold and get them hooked at the very beginning so that they are ready. They are asking you those questions, all right? Does anybody have any questions about your pitching? Nothing. I must have did an awesome job. <laughs> okay, yeah, go ahead. So when you open, open with authority. So right, everybody is, expects you to start with, hi, I'm Ned Lepps and I'm left-handed and three-dimensional, right? <laughs> so that's not, if you, if you open with that, then they start snoozing right away. If you open with, no one likes you, <laughs> then everybody looks up and says, what the hell is he doing, <laughs> right? I don't even know who this guy is yet, right? Now the reality is everybody you're pitching to knows who you are because they've gotten, if you're going, if you're pitching at that level, this, these were angels, these weren't ventures, so they were angels. Um, they have your business plan, their sponsor, you're not there unless a sponsor, it was my, my third or fourth thing. We had actually installed one of, our system, one of our systems on one of their guys, so they knew me, right? I didn't have to come in and say who I was. But I led with what I just said at the very beginning. Fertilizer, we have fertilizer injection, blah, 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 blah. Now, that thing rolls off my tongue like, because I said it five million times. Now, I think that in re you know, since I've learned that, when I learned that pitch, I've had I've done a lot of research. So I'm, I'm a sales guy, that's what I do. I used to be a lawyer, I was a rainmaker. I had guys who did the law work. And I haven't done law since 1999 because it's icky. I have, so I was the head of sales for our company. I was the head of, head of sales for a management association. I was head of sales for UHY advisors in Texas. I sold grocery stores for Save-A-Lot and I am vice president of commercial real estate for Remax Gold today. So I sell stuff. So I have really researched what it means to sell stuff. And I have experienced this. I'll tell you an example. I, I was trying to sell something to Tom Alexi, who at the time was president of the Rojo group over in Belleville. And I was having hell, I couldn't get a meeting. So I found out that he was a huge Ohio State fan. And that year, Ohio State had won the national championship. Go Bucks. There you go. <laughs> so I went and I got 
the, the CD of that game. And I, now you know how I found out? One of the great resources in all of the world is the receptionist. <laughs> the receptionist knows everything about everybody in the company. Male or female, doesn't matter. They know everything about everybody. You stand there, you just wait, you just chit chat with the receptionist. You could ask him all kinds of stuff, man. So I found out that was his thing. So I sent him this thing and an invitation, and I think I sent him a, I acquired, I bought a, a ball signed by whoever the star guy was for Ohio State at the time and sent it to him. I got a meeting the next day. I sold him $50,000 that day. So that was kind of that opening line that made him pay attention to me. So it's not always a line. There's lots of ways to get somebody to pay attention to you. I like it if you are selling something people physical people can see. The one of our people, sell, you know, does a he does. It's called puck, and what they do is they allow you to take care to control everything in your house through these little devices that that go nearby a television, say, and you can control your entire house from your phone without spending thirty thousand dollars to completely, you know, do your house right. So he walked up and he said. You know, he opened, I can't exactly remember how it worked, but basically he said, what if you can control your entire house on this? You know, and so he had this here. So that, the props are good too, right? How can you wake somebody up without, you don't have to just have, uh, be creative. Think about how am I going to get this guy to pay attention or this woman to pay attention to me if I can't get in the door? Or I can get in the door, but they're not paying attention to me because they're on their phone or dealing with their life. So... Any other questions? Nothing, no, luckily there's no hard math questions. You know. <laughs> What's the square root of, you know, 747,000? I'd have to get on this thing. You can do it on here. Yes? So I started watching this television program uh -huh. called Shark Tank. Yep. Maybe you've heard of it. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of pitches on there. I'm just wondering what, nobody's ever talked about that really in this class and I'm wondering what your opinion is because they're short, they're concise. Yep. Some of them are really goofy and funny, which right. I enjoy, but I don't know what your opinion is of that, like how so short I, it should be. I've watched Shark Tank. Usually Shark Tank, the pitchers lead yeah. with the problem they're solving. Right. If you listen to Shark Tank, they don't start with, I'm making bottled water. Yeah. <laughs> they start with, the world needs whatever. And People are thirsty. I make it, yeah. <laughs> So listen to commercials. Commercials never say, I have a car. They say, they have a guy in a Dodge car with two brothers racing each other down the road <laughs> and going really, really fast and fighting each other. And then they say, we make power cars and we're Dodge, right? And it's in our blood and all this other stuff that they say. But at the end of the day, if you're a power car guy or woman, you already got it, right? You stopped. It's the commercial you didn't quite switch off of on the way to the other channel. You say, oh, that's pretty cool. And you watch that commercial. And then the next commercial starts really stupid and you click and you're gone, right? So the great commercials that you remember start with something, start with that first seven to 10 seconds that get you to pay attention and then they have 30 seconds to get you to actually get engaged and hopefully click on something and go buy it. Usually not a Dodge Charger in one click. <laughs> but they want you to want to, right? So do pay attention to commercials. Pay attention to your favorite commercials. Shark Tank is almost always the same kind of pitch. They usually have two to three minutes. And if straight up, if you've ever watched Shark Tank, if they, get, if they get into three and four minutes, they don't get any money, right? If, they don't, if those folks don't interrupt them before they're finished with however much they're going to talk, if somebody doesn't, write, doesn't say, I want to know about blah, 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 and then they go to their slides and they'll turn to that slide, right? Or they'll just talk about it. We have a million dollars in sales. They, peop, as soon as they say something in their two-minute pitch, and this will happen in your two-minute pitch, You'll get partway through your two minute pitch and you'll get interrupted. That's golden! Because that means they're already engaged, you didn't get that far. So you really want them to start asking the questions that you painstakingly put on your pitch deck of all the stuff that's in your business plan. That, by the way, don't throw up words on a slide, right? Make your slides simple. Graphs are good. Colors are good. Um, 
but make it a presentation. They have the boring gobbledygook in the business plan. If they have your business plan, you can say, here's slide 24, that's in your book at 12, page 12. If you know that, I mean, they know you know your stuff, right? I know where it is in your book, they'll go, they'll switch to it, right? But you really don't want them reading it right now, they want, want you to listen to you. So don't put words up here they have to read. I mean, you can put some words up here, but I mean, don't put some big paragraph of junk up here, because they won't have time to read it, they're not gonna read it. So your pitch, is, your DAC has got to be interesting. Show it to people who don't care and see if they listen to your pitch, your two minute pitch, and they can understand your slides, right? Because those people care. So that cannot be your mother. Your mother will love it. So, all right. Any other, anything else? Last time, out of time? Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you.